Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. For today's video we're going to be taking a quick throwback look at the original Transformers 2007 Deluxe Class Scorponok. With so much discussion going around at the moment in regards to the MPM-13 Blackout, I thought that we'd take a throwback look at what is undeniably the ultimate version of the live action movie Scorponok, as despite this guy being released well over a decade ago, no other version that can indeed transform has been able to top this. Now in today's video not only shall I be taking a look at Scorponok himself, but I'll also be showcasing some additional features of which you guys may not in fact actually be aware of, such as a combination between the Voyager class blackout as well as a hidden secret third mode, which ultimately is a game changer for this guy's alternate form. Now we'll start us off firstly with how this guy originally came packaged, of course that being in the Scorpion mode, and oh my goodness, this is absolutely fantastic. You can see for a figure of which is 15 years of age, this looks remarkable. It literally looks dead on to how he appeared in the movie. You can see a as far as that head sculpt is concerned, not only are the decals incredibly impressive, but the sculpt work is just absolutely top notch. I really do regard this as being probably the best figure that came out of that 2007 toy line as a whole. You can see we've got some caution fuel explosive on the side. We've got those really, really awesome red beady eyes slap bang in the center as well as some sculpt work there of some mandibles and of course Scorponok did create what is undeniably one of the most iconic movie scenes in Transformers history that being the legendary left cheek left cheek and he was just such a cool Decepticon in general that being the minion of Blackout you can see here for these actual scorpion arms these look absolutely fantastic once again more of those wicked looking decals actually stamped along the side we've got these really awesome almost piercing razor blades that do in fact actually holster some missiles which I'll showcase in just a second and as we come here to the body of Scorponok so damn movie accurate they really did knock it out of the park where this figure is concerned you can see we've got the Decepticon insignia the paintwork as well is terrific for a deluxe class and we've got this almost grinder slash turbine section in the center which does in fact actually rotate I'll be sure to touch base with that in just a second you can see we've got the scorpion legs here off to the side undeniably such an awesome looking figure and then we've got the actual scorpion tail which i believe is the only part of this character they were able to sever in the 2007 movie he definitely was an indestructible decepticon until i believe he in fact actually met his fate with jetfire in the 2009 movie but you can see that sting there also looks absolutely fantastic and kind of resembles a Decepticon face so definitely be sure to watch out for that later on in the video. Now as far as the articulation is concerned due to the rather abstract nature of the actual robot mode design here's a little different when in comparison to your standard Decepticon and Autobot. So here at the head we do get a double hinge joint which can allow the head to in fact actually look up to a pretty decent range as well as also can look down. Here at the arms they are on hinge joints so can rotate the full 360 back and forth as well as rotate here at the bicep hinge joint at the actual elbows themselves and as far as the legs are concerned these are in fact individually articulated on separate ball joints so these can hinge up and down as well as left to right a minimal range but definitely a really nice touch in my opinion and here as far as the tail goes this can rotate the full 360 hinge here at the center as well as at the top and we also do get a really awesome gimmick which is when you push this button it will cause the sting to shoot forward sadly it did have an almost locking mechanism here at the top which in some ways is good as of course you don't want to lose one of the vital components of the robot mode but it would have been super awesome to have in fact actually been able to fire this projectile it at some Autobot opponents. Now during the 2007 toy line I believe the main gimmick was Automorph and this guy had a fantastic Automorph gimmick. Now sadly considering how old this figure is one of my arms is incredibly faulty but I'll be sure to try my best to show off the gimmick. So basically here on the underside you can see we've got two rubberized wheels which basically when you push Scorponok along the ground would cause his torso to in fact spin as well as the actual scorpion legs to rotate like a turbine that was just so so awesome you can see sadly here for this one it is a little limp I imagine that it's become damaged in battle but that was just such a terrific gimmick overall undeniably one of my favorite 2007 deluxe figures of all time now in regards to some of the hidden features for those of you who do indeed own the original Voyager class blackout you could in fact actually combine these two now once again considering the mechanisms are incredibly old it's not going to work as well as of course if you've got a mint on sealed card or a pristine figure but i'll be sure to showcase basically what the essence was so you were supposed to take the scorpion cell just rotate that down like so and you'll notice that we've got two ports here and here as well as a tab now essentially these would peg onto the underside here of our blackout so we've got some tabs here as well as a slot and if i try my absolute best to align all of this up 
you are just going to want to snap them in like so. And that is basically the combined form. So as I just bring the sting ever so slightly closer in, you can see how we've got Scorponok attached to the underside of Blackout. Sadly, considering how old these figures are, if I was to let go of Scorponok, he would simply just drop to the ground. But the gimmick was basically that you would take the Automorph gimmick here of Blackout, push this section, which in turn would then cause the propeller to rotate. And at the same time, it was also designed to rotate this section, which would then subsequently rotate the turbine. Sadly, considering just how old these figures are, that feature has sadly faded out. But for those of you who have perhaps got better, well-kept versions, it may in fact actually work out really nicely. Now, considering Scorponok, I don't believe ever in fact actually transformed in the live action movie. It really allowed the designers to nail the look of the robot modes. And like we've seen with some of the most recent Studio Series Bumblebee movie characters, characters when figures don't actually have a proper vehicle mode it really does allow them to take creative license and that is exactly what they've done here with this Scorponok. Now I'll show you guys the official alternate mode for this figure and then I'll show you the non-official version of which personally I think is by far the best out of the two. So to begin with you're going to want to take the head dip this section down and then here for the claws you're going to want to align them up here with these cutouts and basically just snap these sections down and of course come to this side and repeat the exact same process. We can then come here to the torso, disengage these panels, which will in fact actually become the legs here for our alt mode. And then as far as the scorpion tail is concerned, you just want to hinge this section up. And with all that being said, here we have Scorponok fully transformed up into his official robot mode. Now, definitely not bad by any stretch of the imagination. If anything, it just kind of looks like Scorponok has decided to prop himself up, but it does reveal some really awesome missile detailings. Now, he does in fact actually have missiles equipped within these sections in the film. I believe he does use these to try and take down Sector 7 or that almost military base in the movie, but very, very nice looking skull work. The legs themselves do indeed actually have ball joints as well as a hinge joint for where I presume the knee would be. So that also is a nice touch, but my actual alt mode for this guy would be to take him and flip the legs around just like so. We can then take these here, hinge this section down, shoot this piece back up, and there we have a really, really weird, definitely Bayverse inspired robot mode for Scorponok. Now this, in my opinion, actually looks awesome. As I just raise the camera up to showcase this figure in more detail, in my opinion, this is such a better alt mode for the character. You can see how this could be an almost weird looking neck design. Undeniably a face for this character. I actually don't think the legs here work out too badly in regards to arms. And the arms themselves actually do act as a quite a stable support structure in terms of legs. So I have without any doubt that if I were to to display this guy in an alt mode it would most certainly be this and it almost actually looks like the fallen in some ways definitely incredibly menacing i'd love to know down in the comment section below on whether or not you guys actually knew this almost secret mode did exist and if you did was it one that you personally displayed within your collection and so some final thoughts for the transformers 2007 deluxe class scorponog as mentioned at the beginning of the review i have without any doubt this is definitely the best figure to come out of that original 2007 toy line it is a figure of which still holds up impeccably well by today's standards and as mentioned previously i really don't think any other official version of Scorponok, either by Hasbro or Takara, will top this guy. I think the robot mode looks absolutely fantastic. The gimmicks that they were indeed actually able to implement into this are by far some of the best in regards to Automorph. The fact that you could basically roll him along the ground and then it would cause that turbine in the center to rotate, which would then subsequently cause the claws to rotate, in my opinion, was just genius. And the fact that it didn't limit articulation in regards to those arms is genius to me. I love the fact that we have a spring loaded gimmick actually packed into the sting of this character. Once again, these older releases are just on another level. They were so well designed, so good value for money. And as far as modern day figures are concerned, despite them maybe being a little better engineering and articulation wise, I really don't think they hold a candle in terms of just the overall outcome that some of these original figures did put out. In regards to alt forms, of course, considering Scorponok never had an actual official mode in the movie, it really allowed them to take creative license, which is probably why the bot mode has ended up as accurate as it has. But for me, I've always, if I were to transform him, have given him that almost secret third robot mode and I also love the fact that he is compatible with the 2007 Voyager class blackouts. I'd love to hear your thoughts sound in the comment section below. Is this a figure that you guys still own within the collection and if it is what do you think? Do you rate it as highly as I do and do you agree with me in regards to this being undoubtedly the best version of Scorponok from the live action movies that we are ever likely to see? I thank you all so much for watching and until my next video I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.